Good afternoon, everybody. Today I'm chatting with Christian Cargill Samard from Adventist Mining. In this interview, we discuss Christian's bull thesis for copper. We also get into his play, Adventist Mining, which is a company that has gotten all the way through a feasibility study, yet finds itself trading at nearly a third of the share price that the company raised the bulk of their money at, and how the company plans to get past the finish line and begin producing copper. We also discuss Ecuador as a mining region, and I ask for any of the timelines that we should be watching as investors. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. Christian, it's the first time we've had you on here. I have to ask, uh, there's a lot of talk in the financial media about this idea of a looming copper shortage. From some of the people I talk to, it's either this is it's going to be a huge shortage. Some people say that the talk is overblown and it's just uh, some promoters in the space that are really kind of uh, making it seem like it's a bigger deal than it actually is. Where do you sit on this idea of a copper shortage? Well, seeing that uh, over 50% of my net worth is tied to copper juniors, I really buy into it. Uh, the question is, when is the copper price going to go euphoric and how, how high a price is going to go? Uh, it's inevitable uh, to happen. And the reason for that is the train has left the station on the elect electrification of the world, the transition from fossil fuel vehicles to electric vehicles. All the car companies are retooling for that. They're retooling for a late this decade uh, transition. And over this decade, you're going to get the uptake on consumers with electric vehicles from the current around 5% uh, sales in the U.S. to 50% uh, plus. And when that happens, that's going to put tremendous pressure on the electrical grid. And that is what's going to uh, create the copper price and aluminum price to go to new, new all-time highs. I, I suspect copper will be $7, 8 $9 a pound mid to end of this decade. So you've obviously looked at quite a few copper projects. You guys have a copper project right now that you guys have taken through the feasibility study stage, and we'll get into that in a second. But I have to ask you, when we're looking at this sort of um, arena of copper juniors, from your view, how many of them have viable projects? Well, at current prices, I would say uh, over 95% of them do not work. You, you're not seeing any new projects getting sanctioned at this time because the incentive price that they need under current capital and operating costs to generate a 15% rate of return is probably closer to $5 than it is $4. So it, it, these are projects of the future. And in order to incentivize these projects get built, you have to have the copper price much higher for a longer period of time. Uh, so I, I put copper projects as well in two categories. There's really any commodity in two categories. You've got the uh, high grade projects that work under any commodity environment. And you know, one of my companies, Adventist Mining, has, has the Kuripamba Eldomo project that fits in that category. Normally those kind of projects are small, High, but high grade, you can do them on your own. They're going to generate a ton of cash. So they're more like free cash flow stories. And then you've got in the copper space, the big porphyry stories. So these, these the C of 0.4%, 0.35% copper. Those projects require billions and billions of dollars of investment. And it's those projects in particular that are going to solve the uh, supply issues going forward but they do not have the economics of the current price to make them uh, viable to be built. Okay, so we talked about Adventus. Um, let's 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 get into it a little bit. For uh, it's 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 the first time we've had you on here. For our viewers that are new to the story, can you give us a high level overview of uh, the projects that Adventus has and uh, what stage they're at, and uh, effectively what investors are looking at here? Uh, sure. So uh, I left the uh, investment banking world in uh, late 2016 to start Adventus as a, a cashed up company, but without a material project. Uh, and I scoured the planet for uh, an attractive uh, copper, copper zinc project in particular. I looked at 240 projects around the world and decided to pivot uh, Adventus into Ecuador in late 2017. 
on this Eldomo uh, project. Uh, what is so unique about it is the grade. So 5% copper equivalent, we've got 10 million tons of that, and it's open pitable. In easy terms, you're talking about $450 per ton of rock is, is the metal value in each, each kind of rock. And the cost to mine, process, process it, and general administrative is around 50 bucks. So it's a massive margin type project. Uh, so the high grade drives very strong rates of return and drives the ability to finance most of the project without equity. So we've arranged uh, $241 million of project financing. And even at current prices today, and with the project financing, we have about a 60% after-tax rate of return. So since 2017, we've taken this project through all the different stages of development. We started with a resource, we took it through a preliminary economic assessment, a PFS, a feasibility study. We're now almost done detail engineering. We've hired the construction team. We expect the final permits over the next few months. And we are the next copper mine to be built globally. And we happen to have the best economics. And we did all of that uh, through raising uh, $140 million of equity at an average price of around 95 cents a share. And after all of it, we're trading at an all-time low of 27 cents a share. So if I'm an investor, that's obviously kind of interesting to me because for junior mining investors, they they, they hear about these things or just junior investors in Canada. Um, we got all these new issuers that come to market and you know, there's like 100 million shares at 0 0.001 cent and they take a public at like 25 cents. Uh, then we hear about this company here where you guys have raised uh, the bulk of your money north of 90 cents and, and the, st the stock stream sub 30 cents. The first thing that comes to my mind is, okay, the cap table. What kind is, is there convertible debt there? Is there a lot more financing that needs to happen to get this project uh, moving? What's, if I'm an investor, what kind of dilution do I have to worry about if I were to go in and buy the stock open market? Yeah, uh, talking about dilution and why we're trading at this level, uh, in January 2022, we decided to arrange project financing for the project, which in most cases is a signal to the market that here it's a real project and, and the management team is prepared to build it on their own. Uh, I would say some people uh, don't want to be involved in, in permitting in a build because uh, it's just a long haul and, and it's high risk. And so we got some sellers post January 2022. We also got hit with the Russia-Ukraine war. And we also did our first financing ever with a half warrant. So all those things combined to uh, general weakness over the following months. And then the, the bottom uh, dropped off uh, the market. And we had a large percentage of our investor base as institutional investors, probably 45 of them. And over the, the last 20 months, we've lost probably 15 of them. And when institutions sell junior companies, they, they don't care on how they sell it. They they call their trader and say, I want to sell 2 million shares the next two days, just do it. And if you look at our share chart, there have been multiple a few day periods where the stop has just dropped precipitously. That's probably a fun getting out of the story. Many reasons for that. Uh, it could be uh, the fund is closing. Uh, we've seen that a few times. It could be redemptions. It could be a fund manager changing. Or it could be as a result of the current marketplace, their uh, chief investment officer has, you know, or, or their compliance officer has changed the criteria for investing in stocks. Like you can't invest in stocks under 500 million market cap or with liquidity less than like half a million dollars a day. So all those things compound you know, those decisions with institutions. So on the way up, it's great to have them because they give you the, the bulk of the money on the way down. It can be quite damaging. So that's where we find ourselves. And we also find ourselves in a, we're coming up to two year permitting period come December. Uh, and it's a, it's a long haul for, for people. Uh, there've been, uh, at the beginning of the process, we expected to be a year. It's gonna be just over two years to get our permits. 
and people will, are doubting whether we'll get it in two years, uh, even though we're you know, right at the finish line. Uh, in terms of how much equity we have left to go, uh, it's probably about $40 million uh, over the next few years. It doesn't have to be all at once. It can be done through strategic investors at a premium. It can be done with what, a mining mogul. It can be done with uh, lots of different ways. Um, uh, but the cap structure is not really an issue in our in our case. It's more the phase we're in, the the market malaise, and uh, uh, and a view that copper in the short term is 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 maybe stuck. So what you just said basically makes me think of the Pierre Lassonde curve. Are, are you familiar with that? I use it all the time. So how, how, how would you describe where Adventus is right now in terms of, of the Pierre Lassonde curve? Well, when we first took on the project, uh, there was an initial resource. So the discovery had been made. Uh, and the and the company that had made a discovery uh, every few years raised a little bit of money to advance it, uh, but it got to a stage where the the founders were get were diluted, getting diluted too much. They were losing control of the company, and they didn't have the means to raise for further capital. So it would have been, if if you look at your chart that you put up, it would be after that first hump is when we started to get involved. And we've been over the last six years from that first hump all the way down to the bottom. And I, I suspect we're at the bottom right now and we're going to start moving up here over the next uh, call it six months. The institutional strategic investment though, when you look at development of assets, normally starts near the top of the discovery and on the way down uh, because you've got something that's potentially real and you need large sums of money to go through those engineering studies, the infill drilling, the permitting, all those kind of things. Uh, I would say that this chart uh, should be much wider in the between the two humps. It's uh, you're right in terms of the, the feasibility study taking, I would say, three years, maybe probably four, but you're missing the permitting aspect of it, which in the United States, most copper projects are 10 years plus in, in the permitting process. The United States is probably the most difficult country to permit a project. In our case in Ecuador, it's a two year time frame. So that, that, Called bottom of between the two humps, I would say on average is more like six years. And that's only if you got access to capital the whole way through. A lot of companies don't have an asset that makes sense through the entire cycle. And so they're going to put their project on ice for a few years until the market improves and have access to capital. Uh, and then you continue on the next phase. We've been continuously advancing from phase to phase because we've had access to capital. So it's more like a real six years, but it's 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 a it's a slug, uh, and it's all about attracting capital with the best cost of capital to get through that, and then through it into construction. Then you re-rate. Okay, so you mentioned Ecuador. I I want to touch on that. Um, I haven't had too much experience with investing in companies in Ecuador in the past. What can you tell us about Ecuador as a mining jurisdiction? Well, geologically, it's extremely interesting. It's uh, it's the same geology as Peru and Chile. So it's the Andean belt. And both uh, Peru and Chile are two of the most important mining countries in the world, have some of the best mines in the world, but you haven't heard much out of Ecuador. And that's because the mining industry really started uh, less than 10 years ago when Lucas Lundin came into Ecuador and put and the government put their stamp on the, the policies that allowed for the development of Lundin Gold's Fruit of Norte project and, and the Chinese Mirador projects. So those two mines are the first two modern major mines in Ecuador's history. And that also led to a staking rush 
within the country from you know, multiple major mining companies and, and famous people in the mining sector. And now we're working on the next phase of major mines to be built in Ecuador. And our project is the next one. It's in the second phase called development. Uh, Ecuador uh, is uh, extremely supportive of growing the mining sector. Just with those two mines, uh, mining is the third most important uh, pillar of the economy. And the level of support we've had from government, I think, is unparalleled compared to other countries. So uh, a lot of exploration still, you know, the next wave of, wave of projects is probably the next decade, but ours is the next one to be built. So I'm going to wrap it up with this final question. If uh, anybody's looking at Adventus, either a current investor or a potential investor, what timelines should they be watching over, say, the remainder of the year? Yeah, well, there was just a uh, an election in Ecuador, and they've elected a new president. Young guy, he's uh, pro mining, so we should have a good new term uh, of support for for the sector. We expect our final permits within the next two to six months. Uh, potentially, all of our permits by the time a new government is sworn in at the end of this year. And I think most importantly, you want to invest in, in, in Adventus uh, to get exposure to the next copper mine globally to go into production with production slated early 2026. That's exactly when I expect copper to hit all, all time highs. And if you throw in six, seven, eight dollar copper into the model, this company will generate multiples of our current market cap per annum in free cash flow. All right. Well, Christian, thanks so much for hopping on here. I think uh, you got a really interesting project and um, I'd uh, love to have you back on here in the future as uh, the story continues to develop. Thanks for having me, Steve. All right, everybody. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do me a big favor. Please smash that like button, subscribe and ring that notification bell. Also, let us know what you think in the comment section. All right. Thanks, everybody.